I want to go over the topic of paraphrasing really quickly. Um, and I want to kind of go over one of the exercises that we had for class. So one thing I want to really emphasize is that paraphrasing is a really difficult skill. It's probably the hardest thing you're going to learn all semester. And even if you work tirelessly all semester on it, chances are it's still going to be a struggle. It's, um, it's a skill that all writers struggle with because it's kind of the equivalent of trying to think of a song when another song is playing. Um, what a paraphrase is asking you to do is to put ideas in your own words without replicating the words, the sentence structure, or the organization of the original. So the one thing you absolutely cannot do when you paraphrase is simply copy the sentence and change a few words. Um, in general, if you're going sentence by sentence by sentence through something, you're probably going to end up plagiarizing instead of paraphrasing. So I want to take a look at this um, example that you had for um, homework in the par in the very first paraphrase activity. And it's kind of a tricky one because it seems pretty simple. It's only two sentences. But these are not sentences written for a general audience. These are sentences written very specifically for professionals um, and teachers of composition. So academics, um, program administrators, and other intellectuals who are interested and already know the language of composition studies. So the goal of a paraphrase is to make the ideas comprehensible for a more general audience so that you can put them in your paper. To do that, it means you really have to understand what it is that the piece is saying. That is the absolute first step. So you have to kind of take it apart. So let's take a look at these sentences. The most fundamental purpose of classes devoted specifically to writing instruction, such as first year or advanced composition courses, is to engage students in a study of and practice with purposes, audiences, and contexts for writing. So this is the theory, right? And then this is the practice. In practice, this means that writers engage in supported analysis of these purposes, audiences, and contexts through supported practice with genres and texts that circulate within and among them. Okay, so I had trouble just reading that, right? So you really do have to take it apart and figure out what this is actually saying. So the first part is pretty simple, the fundamental purpose. So that is, um, let me... Let me put this down here so you'll be able to see. That is the um, main reason for the classes, right? And then the type of classes are writing classes. So instead of saying classes devoted specifically to writing instruction, there's a lot of different ways that we could put that in our own words. You could say first year composition courses. You could say writing classes colleges. There's a lot of different ways to say it. Um, so then you also have some really specific language. In the study of and practice with, that kind of phrasing is a very academic phrasing that would only be used by someone who um, is used to writing in a genre and for a genre for other academics. So you really have to think about what that means, right? So what that's actually saying is that they're going to learn about the topic. Oh my gosh. And then they're also going to learn how to do it. Right? That's the practice. So those are two different things. So that already sets up two parts, right? That the writing classes um, both teach, you know, content as in the material you need, but also the ability to do that with the materials. So purposes, audiences, and contexts for writing, that is another very specific phrasing. And if you are putting that in, that's more than three words, so it has to go in quotations, but you can also translate it. That's the rhetorical situation, right? Purpose, audience, and context is all about writing. So. You have the theory of the class and the practice of the class. The practice is what happens in the classroom, right? So if that's what the classroom should be doing, and that's what happens in it. 
So this means that writers engage in supported analyses. So what are supported analysis going to be? Right, these are, um, I would say, instructor-led exercises to help them analyze a text. And through supported practice with genres and texts that circulate among them. That is, that is a bunch of words all thrown together, and you have to figure out what they mean. So we have to take it... Um, one by one. So again, supported practice, that would be instructor led or supported. Genres are different types of writing. And then the texts that circulate within and among genres. So those are examples, right, of the types of writing. So now when we think about what this is actually saying is, um, this is showing, this is the WPA one, by the way. What this is saying is that these classes have a purpose for writing instruction, but they're in practice, that means you're gonna both read and analyze and do the text themselves. So let's think about how to introduce that. So the first thing to remember is you always need a signal phrase, right? So you need the WPA makes an argument about the, and here you can use lots of different words like reason or theory. Um, So you can give kind of an overview. Um, you can go one by one, but here, this is a very repetitive um, excerpt because you have this purpose, audience, and context. And again, you have purpose, audience, and context. But remember, we talked about how that's really rhetoric. So the next thing that you want to pay attention to is you don't want to just go sentence by sentence and replicate the order because that is somebody else's work. So again, we're translating, we're giving a description, we're putting it into our own words. Um, And so this last sentence here, courses should give students an opportunity to read, analyze, and practice, and I'm going to say both, reading and writing different types of texts. This is really getting to the gist of what this top um, passage is talking about, because the top passage, like I said, is very repetitive, right? And what they're really arguing is students need to have an opportunity not just to write, but here you go, the supported analysis, that's reading, and then practice different types of texts. So um, this would be much closer to a paraphrase where you're giving the information in a way that is clear um, and more in your own voice. You're giving complete information. You're not leaving anything out. But what you are not doing is you're not just going sentence by sentence and replacing a word here or there. Now, I do use the word practice which is up here. I'm not really sure what other word I could use, but in that case, that's a single word taken 
it's not a whole phrase. So anytime you're using more than three words, they need to be in quotation marks because then you're starting to use the phrasing of the original. So this is a difficult skill. This is a skill that you will struggle with and you should just expect to struggle with it and just let that go. Um, but the thing I wanna tell you is the more that you are kind of making a conscious effort to really learn this skill, then the easier it does get. The more you do it, it's like any other skill, the more it gets easier and easier. And the other thing I wanna point out is because this is so difficult, this is exactly why students get tripped up um, with plagiarism, is because it's very difficult to actually reword stuff. So oftentimes students are taking uh, information from a source um, and they're using too close to the original wording. So it's really important to pay attention to it's also a really good reason why students shouldn't try to copy off of cheat sites and the internet because in general it's very difficult to turn that into your own wording and your own phrasing and then it becomes very easy to find and you get written up for plagiarism so again this is paraphrasing um, you're going to be doing some more exercises with this over the course of the semester um, make sure that you're paying attention to the notes and comments I leave on this and also on the T paragraph one as well, uh, because these smaller exercises are going to help you apply these skills to your larger papers. So let me know if you have any questions. You can always stop by office hours for extra help.